Hi there, folks. Um, thanks for joining today's webinar. I'm Mark Westfall. I work at Schmalls in the marketing department. I'll be your host for this session. We'll give everybody a couple more minutes to get online here. While we're doing that, I have a video that I'd like to show you. It's basically a, a demo cell that was set up for a trade show at the end of 2019. As you know, this is a fairly new product for us. So this is a demo cell that just basically shows the changing of multiple heads and the use of this SXT being used on different sculpts of metal press materials. I'll uh, go ahead and start this. There's no sound to it. It's basically just a show for you um, while we wait for folks to get lined up on the queue. You can see this configuration set up for flat and it's going to change out here in a second once it moves over and drops these flat pieces. If you're hearing a little bit of sound, it's because it's at a trade show that they're showing this. So it's people speaking in the background. This shows the magnetic grippers picking up a piece. And like I said, this was just a little preview for you all to take a quick peek at this tool. It's a relatively new tool for us. Um, we have here today presenting for us uh, Keith Green. Keith is our automation specialist for the US marketplace. His job is primarily helping the sales team that we have out in the uh, throughout the US to understand the complexities of the processes um, in an automotive. Hello, system. I'm sorry. Oh, that was, that was me, Mark. Interrupted, interrupted with that. I am sorry about that, folks. Um, now that everybody's on, um, we'll go ahead and get started. Before we get turn it over to Keith, a couple of housekeeping items. One, uh, the questions and answer or question and answer period will be held until the end of the webinar. We're gonna. Keith has got a lot of information to run through here, so we'll hold those, but if you'd like to key in a iChat question or raise your hand, just to remember that we'll need to get back to you later on after the question and answer period starts, that'd be fine. Um, and there's also a piece of literature attached here. If you look at your dashboard, there's a literature piece on the X SXT for you, you can take that, or if you don't download it now, we'll be sending that to you in a thank you email after the show is over. And with that, I'll turn it over to Keith. And Keith, I'm gonna give you a presentation. Right. Now. You should see that come up, Keith. Yeah. Okay, good afternoon, everyone. This is Keith here, as Mark mentioned. Uh, very glad to be with you guys and gals today. Uh, thank you very much for your time and, and attention here. And as you all are aware, I'm sure, uh, you know, Smalls has had the vacuum cups, vacuum uh, holder tooling components, 
vacuum generators, things like that for years and years. But the one thing that we were missing for the automation processes was our tooling components that you see with the tubes and clamps and things such as, which I'll be running over here in a moment. So that being said, now Smalls is the solution provider from the robot flange to the workpiece, more than just suction cups. So uh, I'll get into more of the component componentry on this in just a moment, but, but what it highlights is uh, compared to any welded toolings, it's a precise durable components, reliable, and uh, it increases life on suction cups, reduces downtimes, such as if you have a crash or need to make an adjustment, very quick and easy to do that. We have some improvements within the clamps that our competitors do not have, and I'll run through that really shortly. And this actually uh, lower weight and can be configured to be lower weight than what our, our most, uh, most production lines are running with at this, this point in time. Another good point is uh, reusable. So this can be carried over from uh, program to program. So therefore, uh, in, the, in the future, you know, you could buy it and uh, continue using it for years and years on end. Our uh, portfolio is a few, few compact components. So that requires lower storage units of, of each part in, in your plants. And it's a simple design and fast assembly. Go through that as well for how to add a clamp, uh, add a, add a, like an emergency situation or whatever might come up. So, so quickly here, we have the bucket, we call it, uh, you know, the receiver bucket, uh, bayonet unit. Then we have the main spline boom, uh, crossbar structure. And then of course the clamps that will hold all of it together for the extension arms down to the cup holders and cups. Or if uh, the video showed that was a magnet in, in position. So also we have the magnets, our magnets that we can mount to the structure as well. Uh, quickly, uh, I'm gonna go through the from, the, from the base out of these units, give you some more details. And uh, this, this bucket unit is made for 40 and 60 millimeter size tubing. And for the 40, we can have either three pneumatic connections or no pneumatic connections. And with the 60, we have three, six or no pneumatic connections within the unit. That can, that can be an internal fan through, through the system. And of course the locking down of this is through the uh, manual locking handle and unlocking here for the for hold it in position. Uh, of course, the mating bayonet, same thing, 40 and 60 millimeter size tubing system that comes out the end there. And again, three are no pneumatics on the 40 and three six are no pneumatics on the 60 size uh, tubing. And if you uh, need a very long, more than two meter tube coming out, we do have a reinforced version available that uh, will accept the tube much deeper than, than shown in this picture here. So if you do have a long structure, we do have a reinforced version that can handle it. The uh, aluminum, aluminum tubing that goes into that, and of course the crossbar as well, we got that in 25 millimeter, 40 millimeter, 60 millimeter. And of course various lengths, uh, depending on how, how, long you, how long you need to reach into the tool to uh, pick up the part. And we also do have the tubes with additional slots available. If you just need to run, if you've got an internal uh, bayonet and then run the tubes outward to out to the cups. Now, our clamps, we, we, we've done something uh, a little different here than what you're used to. Big improvement differentiator compared to our competitors. Uh, we have double clamps, of course, single clamps, parallel clamps, uh, rotational clamps. We got more than what you see in the picture here, of course. And again, that is 25, 40, and 60 millimeter. That accepts those three size tubes. And uh, we also do have adapters uh, of these clamps that are 
actual capable one inch, one and a half inch, and two and a half inch as well. Because we do have a lot of uh, imperial sizes here in the, in, the, in the United States. Now, one feature I want to bring up to you closely here is you'll notice all of our clamps are two colored. We have a black half clamp and the other half is a silverish gray colored clamp. Now, what we do with that, I'll get into the next, next slide a little deeper, but if you can see the center portion here is completely touching, it's already torqued, factory torqued with the screw from the underside. So what that does for you is it, it reduces the amount of bolts that you have to loosen or tighten during adjustments. So if your tube was in here on this side, all you have to do is loosen or tighten the one bolt to a specific torque, which is 20 foot pounds, 30 newton meters. And uh, then that, that, that tube is connected and it's, it's complete. Same thing for the other side. And again, all of our sizes, 25, 40, 60, one inch, one and a half, two and a half, all of that is there. And like I said, single bolt for adjustments. Now here, as you can see on this, on this other clamp now, our double clamp, same situation. If you see the black bolts, those are factory torques. You don't have to mess with those. And we're touching where the black bolt side is, is in contact. The other side, once you get your tube in there, you tighten up the single bolt for, you know, for clamping it. And uh, that's the only one you have to adjust. Same thing for the bottom, you'll see on the bottom, bottom portion of this clamp as well. So uh, again, same thing, all the same size that I just went over with on the last slide. For those uh, that, that need this hooked to a robot similar to the one in the video, we do have these uh, 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 robot flange clamps, units with the, uh, the single or the, or the two, two for single tubes or you can come out here with two tubes if you need to, come out both sides or uh, the, the double unit for uh, the short four clamps there. Uh, we do have all of our extension arms. So uh, we have the swivel arms uh, here, which can accept the apple core, which everyone I'm sure is aware of the apple core unit. And uh, then we have the flip down hinge clamp that, that will accept the uh, balls for your cups, for your cup holders. And that is actually for the 28.5 millimeter ball, 32 millimeter ball, and of course the apple core. So we have all sizes that are in the marketplace, uh, all covered. And then we have the, uh, the double clamps as well, extensions and uh, again, apple core, all the, uh, the 20, uh, uh, 25 millimeter clamps, 40 millimeter clamps here, whatever you need to put it onto your system. And, and we have those various links Extension arm starts 75 millimeters, go all the way to 475 millimeters, and increments of 50 millimeters. And then the uh, double clamps are from 50 to 200 and 25 millimeters uh, increments. Now, where it gets really interesting and we can save a lot of weight, I'm gonna go through that in a moment, is this, this is one of our uh, uh, differentiators here for clamps is what we call our gear bracket. And we have teeth between the two units, the two clamps here, and they're set at a 10 degree pitch. And it's also spring loaded. And the spring, what that allows you to do is you slightly loosen it over uh, far enough to clear the teeth, but it keeps a little pressure uh, to separate these guys. So then once you start tightening it back down, it's it kind of pulls itself into place, but it's very easy and doesn't just completely want to rotate on you where more than we, what you would like for it to. So it kind of helps you to, to for adjustments. And uh, again, you'll see the two different colored clamps. What it is, the silver silver end of the of all of our clamps are for the, the male male unit to go through, and then the black portion has a thread in there for the female 
to, to take in the screw there. And we also have a, a gear bracket with the, this one has the, the hinge over. So if you need to add this to a unit that already has in cups on there or in clamps, you need to put this between the, the main spline bracket and the outer end of the, the uh, crossbar. You can flip this one over quickly instead of having to take cups off in order to put another clamp on. But we do have them both ways. As you can see, this would be our slide on clamp to the right. And there's another extension that we have that's also geared. So you can actually build off of this with extensions if you need to. And uh, then here's the hinge. So depending on how your situation is. And uh, those extension bars here that you see, they go from 50 millimeters out to 500 millimeters. Now, uh, here's a quick conf configurable of these guys. Just a slide on the tubes. This is these two pieces. And then the slide on the clamps with the hinge. These two pieces are if you could add extensions. And one good thing about our, our unit, the way we have it laid out, folks, is that each individual piece can be bought individually. You don't have to completely buy a clamp every time, every time that you uh, have, have to place an order. So if you want each individual part, you can buy each individual part. And this is a like an elbow bracket, angle bracket. Same thing, that's, a, that's another addition that uh, uh, our competitors, as far as I know, do not have. And then you can also build that and turn those clamps any direction that you might need to. Here's another quick configurable components sheet here. Uh, just showing, you know, to build, build this with just an extension open end tube you go with that one or if you need the double the double locks both ends you got that one and so on and so forth angle brackets as well and again if you'll notice it's always silver black silver black silver so with these things to go so it's pretty easy now what i want to show you is the advantages of this 10 degree angle along with it shortly i'm going to show you how we take weight out this is a conventional tube on your left or, or system on your left. It's usually completely, you know, cross clamp here. You got a crossbar, another crossbar, and uh, to get to four, get four cups out, out to the, to cover the part, the panel. Now what we can do is come out with one crossbar, if you'll notice, over on this, on the right side. And with those angle brackets, we can angle out to cover any direction we need to at about any angle we need to. And actually the next, next couple of slides show this much better as a better comparison. So let me get on into that. Okay, here's, your, here's our competitors to the left again. And uh, there's just, just leaves you no regulation for freedom. You have to you know, go out with the crossbars and then put the clamp, uh, branch angles, branch, branch tubes out and branch over to you where your four cups are at. But at the same time, we can look at our gear bracket layout to the right. We're coming out with one spline, one main boom, coming across the crossbar. Then we can put our gear brackets out to get the cups in the exact same locations as those on the left are, but with less components, it's gonna be less weight. And I'll show you that in a moment. And uh, it's very easy and quick since we only have one, one bolt per clamp. It makes it pretty quick and easy to set up. I, I may remember, less components. Now, one thing it also does is our system is a, a lower profile unit. So therefore, uh, I don't have to mention on this exactly right here yet, or right now on this page, but we can lower it down. So of course, everyone knows the lower the profile the sooner you can start it into the press, feed your press light up, and uh, you know it'll come out of the press quickly, quicker as well. Okay, here's one that does show some dimensions for us. If you compare these two tools, the uh, main boom here is 1800 millimeters, where we can cut ours down to the smallest system is 1650. So we're saving uh, 
150 millimeters there, or so uh, that's six inches. And also, if you look at the other direction of this, the competitor's tube has to be 560 millimeters in order to get the cups in those positions they were in. And on the small system, we are 450 millimeters because we can actually branch out off of our main spline or our crossbar boom right there. So we took some weight out where, where one crossbar lifts and we're six inches shorter here and about said, uh, four inches shorter here. So we took 10 inches out of the, the, main, the main two aluminum tubes. Now, competitor's weight on this guy is as, as built. This one tur turns out to be 11.97 kilograms. And uh, so you're looking at, uh, you know, right at 26 pounds. And this is component huge. So if you look at the small system, covering the same panel, getting the same job done with less weight, less components, and, uh, and, and, a, and a smaller profile, we're down to 8.4 kilograms, which is about 18 pounds. So we saved about eight pounds per tool built in this configuration. Now, uh, I'm kind of rushing through this. I don't take that much data, but anyways, I, 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 I get questions here in a moment. But as you know, down at the end of this, uh, all of our new stuff, we've had these out for a while, which is our what we call holder tooling, holder system for, for uh, cup tooling. And it's very simple, quick solution, wide range of applications. Again, we cover all of the sizes for the 28.5 uh, millimeter ball, 32 millimeter ball, apple pores to slip into all of the units to hold your cups in place. Also, we have the holders for spring plungers. If you need some compensation, have to pick up for a blank pickup or whatever the case may be, and we have that covered as well. Very flexible, and all of our new system here as well been out probably a little over i think a little over two years it's also compatible just for the airline coming in uh internal venturis external venturis we can have them all built in with this uh any threads you have a g38s uh mpt 38s or a pass through whatever whatever you got we can we can fix it up and even add a, a vacuum sensor on here as well and also over our competitors on this, we also cut the weight, we slid it down to about 45% lighter if you go to our competitors and look at the same exact setup. Now here's a little bit more on these holder tool systems. This is a little, little better close up of some of those parts if you haven't seen them. Again, we've got in, internal venturis uh, with or without blow off single line, double line with a blow off. Uh, pass through ports, if you need that, just put your fitting here. And if you've got a central central vacuum system, then that's what you'd use. If you're decentralized, of course, you need a venturi or something out there like that. And I know a lot of people has uh, the uh, Norgren twist locks on the, with a square adapter on top of their cups. You also can handle that. I don't see the bottom of this one over here to the bottom left, but you can actually either screw or you know twist twist our cup in there or slide it in. We've got that that guy made to where it can accept either the slide in if people prefer sliding it in or sliding in or or like I say doing the twist the twist connection push up and twist. And again. Like I mentioned there in the other slide, 20, all, all the balls we have covered, apple cores we have covered. And again, you can put, put these on with the uh, vacuum gen uh, generation on our sensor as well. Spring plungers, as I mentioned again, yes, it can be spring plungers in the, in the blank pickups or blank D stacks. We have those as well, different various links. And these guys are, are you can't 
we've got it both ways. We've got sliding, uh, sliding bearings inside, so they're anti-rotation. And we also have a bottoming guard, so you, if it gets compressed completely all the way, this contact point here will contact the sleeve up top. So you're not going to ex ex overextend your springs and stretch them out and break them. They won't, they won't be completely collapsed. Uh, cups, yeah, I'm sure most of y'all should know that, that we're the uh, top provider of cups for any, any type of material that you have out there. Uh, high temp cups, uh, oily cups. This guy here is one that I'm just demonstrating today is our SAX cup, and it's, it's very flexible. It can actually uh, wrap wrap over a slight, you know, a pretty strongly curved surface, and the holding force is uh, very high and uh, very good on oily surfaces. So if you're moving the press pretty quickly, if uh, robots moving pretty quickly from acceleration to deceleration, then this cup will hold on very tightly to uh, to the panel and and uh, uh, hold slippage very well. We won't let the panel slip to, to get this located. And as you also shown in uh, seeing the video, we do have magnets that you can mount, mount to any of our tooling gear. And we have that in 20, 30, 40, and 50 millimeter magnets and uh, high performance magnets as well as high temp. So we can get uh, you can get these tip, these magnets for hot forming, and they're good to 350 degrees Celsius for the contact surface. Uh, this slide here is showing us actually some of this tooling that I just went over with you guys. Actually, a pick and place unit like a, it's called our Jumbo Flex 35. It's just a hand trigger unit that, uh, so actually a, a pistol grip unit that you can lift right with our tube lifters and uh, flip the panel or set the panel. That, that looks that, that there is a uh, the box, inner box side of a pickup truck. And I also wanted to get, give you guys a link to our web link on this, uh, on these parts. So I've, I've, I've included it here. I'm gonna open that up quickly just to go through and uh, show you if you click this link, it'll take you directly into our website to the SXT tooling. And basically everything that I just went over is you can scroll through here, click on any section that you'd like to get a breakdown of anything that you've seen. So you could click there and it'll break you right on into the into this geared section. And then from there, as you can see, scroll on down and you can you can get your individual clamps. Here's our article numbers part numbers, that'd be a D25 uh, 25 millimeter, there's the 40 millimeter, and so on and so forth. So that'd be our one inch size there. So, let's see, back that out. So basically with that being said, uh, that's the, the end of my presentation except for questions. And I know I ran through it pretty quickly, but at the same time, I wanted to uh, get through it with you guys, not take up too much of your time. And at the same time, let's see, how, uh, see if you might have some questions. Mark, how are we looking? Okay, well, I'm gonna start off with the questions. Um, <laughs> I have one, just um, if, if somebody has an application that they are wanting to look at and want to get some assistance for, where do they start um, in our structure? You're the specialist, but we also have uh, regional sales managers in place. Do they go to them or do they go to you first or how does that process start? Actually, we can, uh, for now, we can start directly with me and I'll contact the regional sales managers within their region that that to go through them secondly. But then if uh, 
if I mean, just really, I guess really the answer is to start with me first. Start with me, and then I can direct it to the right uh, RSM that's out there in the, in, across the country to handle handle their their issue or their concern. Okay. And right here on the screen right now, we have um, contact information. I didn't put Keith's out here, but what is on here is my pre my information, my email address. So if anybody has applications or if you want anything, if you want to know who your salesperson is, or if you're just looking to talk to one of our application en engineers about an application or want to talk to Keith, I can help direct you. Feel free to use my email address as your start point, and I will get you in contact with whomever you need. Also, if you're looking for information, you need images or you want videos, or if you're looking for a copy of some of the literature on this or any of our other tools, you can also hit me up directly on that email. Um, if you don't mind, I would like to take the presentation. Let's see, I don't see any questions just yet. Yes, I do, I'm sorry. Uh, Jeff. Danny, I'm opening up your microphone. You're self-muted. Oh. oh, he just asked if we could send the contacts, so I will take care of that part. Um, there's a question. How often does the unit need maintenance? Actually, the, there's not going to be any maintenance needed on that unit. It's, uh, like say, once you get the, the torque on the on the bolts to the proper torque when you set it, then uh, it's it's not going to rust, sanitize the aluminum, so uh, should not be on any of the parts there needing any any maintenance. Now, if it gets crashed, of course, you break a break a bolt, then of course you will have to at that point you know, replace the broken part. So I mean, if this is used in a press situation. Uh, stamping in for uh, stamping situation on a, on the press line, and those are very very tough applications. And, and that at that point, yeah, they can uh, you can break something. So need to have a little little backups, but that's with anything. You can't. Those presses are pretty uh, pretty strong. Um, we do have another question. I'm going to open up your microphone here, Tom Camilla. You're self muted though. Tom, you had your hand up. Sorry about that. If I could add, just wait on that question for Tom. Uh, I almost forgot, but our bayonets are compatible to fit into the CPI to Staco and Bilzing uh, uh, receivers. So uh, if you already have that and, and you want to go with our tooling, it is compatible to fit, you know, that particular model model. model. But go ahead, Tom. I'm sorry. Um, I'm not sure if we're getting we got Tom live here. Not yet. But there is another question came in. Um, are there markets for this other than automotive industry? Oh yes, actually, for any type of uh, it could be used in uh, you know lift assist units for picking things up at the end of a line or uh, any anything of that that nature. Uh, and, and it being it being a modular system that you could build your own structure for whatever the, the need may be, as long as you have your you know either if you're going to run with a vacuum for the gripper or the cup, depending on what you need to pick up, you could build a structure like like a Lego set, if you will, just to get to where you need to go and. Uh, and so yeah, it could be used for anything. Um, for those of you that are watching the presentation still, there's I uh, just put up a QR code up there on the screen. If you would take a second to take a quick snapshot of that, it'll leap, it'll hyperlink you to a question. Um, I know everybody hates getting surveys after the fact. So this is a way to avoid that because the one piece of information that I'd really like to get from folks when we do those surveys is what types of presentations, whether it's 
um, an application or an industry or maybe even a specific product that you'd really like to see a presentation done from web or from Schmalz, I'd like to know what those are. So if you wouldn't mind, just take a quick second, take a picture, it'll lead you to um, Mentimeter, I believe is the name of the system. So there's an answer. Your answer will pop up here, but it'll also get me a download. And I promise you, then you won't have to do the uh, after the webinar presentation or survey. Um, there is another question that's come in here. Okay, here it is. It's is there any solution that would aid with building a specific configuration for a given workpiece, or is this mainly manually done? Um, I think, for example, an online tool. I don't think we have an online configurator, do we? No, we do not have an online configurator for this. Uh, and right now, uh, Smalls is not going to do any design uh, design work for this tooling. Say for like if you had a project going into a full line, then uh, uh, right now we're not going to take on the designing of that tool. But uh, if you go through the website, as I showed you there, you can find all of the compatible parts to, to add on. Or, or if you need some assistance at your shop, you know, uh, we'll be glad to come, come by and take a look at what you're looking to do and then see what we can offer up as uh, which part you should you should possibly you know start with work with did that answer the question okay. i don't see any other questions coming in i would like a few more answers on the uh applications or industry specific products um if anybody has anything that you would like us to see we can put these presentations together. We all have a little bit more downtime right now, so I'd like to put them out as frequently as we can. But um, topics are, we don't want to put stuff out there that people aren't inter interested in. So anything that you guys have, please feel free to push that out there. The app on there will stay open. So if you want to do it after we get offline, please feel free. If anybody needs to see the QR code again, it's right there. Um, other than that, it looks like we've come to the end and I appreciate everybody joining. Keith, thank you very much for presenting. I know yeah, it's thank, not you. thank you everyone for taking the time out to see this. Thank you. And everyone have a good day and look for more invitations to more webinars soon. Thanks.